You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. When I say who are we, you say Saints. When I say are we ready, you say who? Who are we? 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 Welcome, welcome, you're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q chiming with you on podcast 409, and for those who don't know, we are the number one independent Saints podcast in the land, coming right at you, baby. Welcome aboard to all our new and established subscribers of the Sports Coma. That round of applause is for you and yearns. As I'm from New Orleans, and that's my vernacular. And being from New Orleans, we're going to cover some New Orleans football today. So if you are black and gold faithful, a diehard who looking for a podcast, who ain't exactly one of those network style deals, welcome to the Sports Coma. The number one independent sports podcast as far as the Saints are concerned. And we're steadily growing, baby. And we like to welcome you to our family to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell to get to be a part of future shows as well. So going to today's show 409 on the Sports Coma, coma we're going to recap day 21 of the Saints. Of course, we had a couple of days off as the Saints Kind of took a day off and then a, there was a travel day involved getting everything set up. So we felt to have to work so hard to take a couple of days off from some of the news and notes and things that we're getting ready to start for the joint practices that's happening in San, in, uh, in the uh, California area. So the Saints, man, really looking awesome at Jack Hamlet Sports Complex. If they have a couple of practice sets in the beautiful Los Angeles area, very comfortable. Good to see the black and gold guys take a break from the humidity and hopefully they bring some of that good weather back home. So anyway, we'll recap that on today's show. Uh, the first day of the joint practices against the Chargers at the Saints get a lot, get a little chippy with them. Got interviews from Coach Sean Payton. He'll chime in with his thoughts. QB Drew Brees, uh, linebacker Demario Davis chimes in as well as Latavius Murray, all those. Plus, we'll cover some Saints news. The Saints welcome aboard another new defensive prospect and no it's not a damn pass rusher it we must be allergic to pass rushers signing pass rushers or wanting any kind of pass rusher we must be just allergic to doing that because that is one of the massive things that we need behind our two stars and we can't seem to get a break we get everybody else we get every we get running backs we get offensive linemen we get linebackers but for whatever reason we can't seem to get a pass rusher but i won't get into that Anyway, let's get the show started off talking about the first of the two practices, joint practices that are supposed to be happening ahead of Sunday's preseason game. You got two really good teams Now these teams practiced last season and was very chippy in as both teams learned a lot about each other. Now, it's like I said, it's two really playoff style teams right here battling. And it was a lot of action going back and both forth because these both these teams are stocked with talent. Now the Chargers recorded a cup; they recorded a couple of interceptions over Drew Brees and Bridgewater, but the Saints cornerbacks also enjoyed some good times against their people as well. And to the, today's observations, who participated in practice? Linebacker Alex Anzalone, Saquon Hampton, Marcus Shrells, uh Ethan Greenwich. They weren't there. Now, Azzalone and Hampton have not practiced since the opener. So we don't quite know what's happening with those two, but we have to keep an eye out. Elvin Kamara, Mike Thomas, Keith Kirkwood were in full pads and participated in stretching and the conditioning portion of practice before leaving the field to do work on the side. Now, Garrett Griffin returned to a full weeks to a full workout as well. 
Michael Burton, I don't know what's up with that dude. He's the backup fullback, just in case you guys don't know. Rookie Alizé Mack, who missed a lot of training camp, won on the sidelines, but not in uniform. So that shows you why the Saints went out and signed that other fullback. And here's another thing. Talk about Emmanuel Butler's another guy that everybody's big on. He had a pretty decent practice today, but this time not for turning heads. The notice for Butler lined up in a few few times during practice. He appeared with the first team offense with the Saints shoot three wide receiver sets along with Ted Ginn Jr. and Traquan Smith. Thomas and Kirkwood were on the field, probably played a large role in the Saints looking to Butler, but there's no doubt the undrafted rookie has made a name for himself and they want to see what he can do. And he's not the only wide receiver. We'll talk about the other wide receiver in just a moment, but besides that, the defensive rookie took a lot of snaps today. Kate Nellis, the, the team's Seven-round draft pick, one of two seven-round draft picks. The other one was Alizé Mack. He was observed working with the first-team unit in place of Alex Anzalone in the 11 on 11 drills in the Saints 4-3 uh, defense. He departed the field when the Saints switched to a nickel package, leaving Demario Davis and A.J. Klein, their more veteran linebackers, on the field. And, of course, it was a lot of chipping that's going on during camp as well. The Saints cornerbacks got an opportunity to go against some really good charge of wide receivers as well as uh, quarterback Phillip Rivers, who's one of the, the game's best. Eli came up with two separate really good plays when he faced off against Mike Williams, the big wide receiver, and Andrew Patton. Now, Rivers attempted to hit Williams, who's big. He's 6'4", deep down the sideline, but Apple was able to match up well against him and disrupt the ball, get his hand in there, he knocked it away. Now, Patton ran like a short out route, but Apple stuck on Patton and broke the ball up there as well, so he did play really well. And kudos to Patrick Robinson, who also had a pretty good play against former LSU wide receiver Malachi Dupree. Dupree made a double move on a few yards on, at the line of scrimmage, but Robinson, he smelled it all the way. He quickly caught up and made ground. And uh, as the ball was thrown deep down the sideline, the Saints a cornerback turned his as the ball came down. He jumped up at the same time and batted the ball to the ground. So pretty good play by Patrick Robinson who a lot of people, include myself, want to see which Patrick Robinson we're getting. Are we getting the Patrick Robinson that are we getting the Patrick Robinson that the Saints got rid of? Or are we going to get this Philadelphia Eagle guy who helped the Philly Eagle team get to the championship and win the Super Bowl a couple of years? That's the thing we want to see after having that broken ankle. But before we talk about any more of the rest of the practices, let's see what Coach Payton had to say about um, you know, whether it's starting at the beginning with the individual uh, one-on-one -on -one routes into the team periods, um, but a lot I'm sure we're going to have to clean up when we watch the tape, you know, and, and that's what we just finished talking about. You know, you're in, a, you're in a race to keep improving every day. When you see someone else, you, you get different looks, both sides of the ball, um, different looks in the kicking game and, and uh, get on that tape and, and, and try to improve between today and tomorrow. How drastic would you say the climate difference is, and how does that affect what you can do? Well, look, the, it, it's significant, and so the, you know, you're not breaking as much maybe as you would be at home. You know, typically we'd have six or seven breaks, um, and I think that's good. One of the good things about coming here to work. How much more does it mean that this is a team that had a winning record last year that has high expectations this season? And has yeah, much like us. I, I think just the. The prior two years, and, and they're a team that uh, obviously was a playoff team a year ago. And, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, when you get two, game, two teams working together like that, uh, you know, it, it helps both sides. Sean, Tate had a nice completion uh, today. I wonder, what do you see in him, uh, his development? What are you looking for? Well, it's kind of twofold, and it's tough, because where he's excelling in one area and you would say really far down the line, and, and one of our key contributors in special teams and also a key contributor with what we do offensively in a different role as an F. Relative to the quarterback play, I think he and Teddy have had a real good camp. And you see the progress, you see the progressions, you see uh, a more and more comfortable player, and that's encouraging. Simi Cobb seemed to make a couple plays today. What, what, what he did. About He's developmental did. right now in his second year. Um, Man, there's some times he does some things very well, and there are other times he's got to work on the, the specifics of the position. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, he's one of those young players that, that needs the reps, needs the work, and, and 
you know, a practice like today is extremely beneficial to some of those younger guys. Sean, do you remember two years ago, I think in preseason in the game against the Chargers, Alvin had 50 yards. First series, yeah. Is that a, do you have a light bulb moment when, when a player makes a play like that or not? Well, I think historically, when we talk about a player that gains confidence, I mean, that run was, you know, early in the game. I want to say it was the first series. Um, yeah, I, I think that takes place in our game. You know, players do things very well and they build on those things and, and that's where the confidence comes from. And uh, and I think very early on, we saw a lot of positive things from him. And, and so the confidence not only grew with himself as he played, but it also grew relative to what we wanted to do. That's Coach Sean Payton talking about a bevy of different topics, including Sammy Cobbs. Junior, a very outstanding young wide receiver, trying to make a name for himself. He was a guy the Saints picked up on the pra- off the practice squad from the Washington Redskins last season. He's been with the Saints for a minute. And he's speaking about Sammy Cobbs is because he had a good day of work Thursday. He had a couple of notable plays in one-on-one team drills. But his best effort came on the 11-on-11 drill when he was considering uh, producing some really a lot of people oohs and ahs from the crowd. He lined up at the right side of the field, took off down the field at the snap of the ball. Taysom Hill, who's the quarterback and at the time, spotted him, threw the ball, put a just lofted a deep ball down the right side. And he had Aaron Spriggs, which is the Chargers cornerback and safety Rod Teamer uh, going to his side. He shifted to, into another gear and took two defensive backs, took on split the two and then called a really nice catch with both hands for a long touchdown over those two defensive backs. So very good play for Semi Cobbs Jr. as he continues to step up. He has decent speed, big wide receiver who can attack the ball at its highest points. And we're fortunate to have a bunch of really good young wide receivers with size and some with speed that's doing some terrific things. So love what Semi Cobbs is bringing and what Emmanuel Butler as well is bringing. So the Saints continue to really find these gems and put things together. Now Emmanuel uh, Butler was another guy that played who was who continued to turn it up in camp. And of course, a lot of Saints people out there really think that Sammy Cobbs and Emmanuel Butler have a really solid opportunity to make this team. And, and why not? When you're dealing with really spectacular players like these two guys, why, why, why would you not think that that they couldn't possibly produce? But anyway, looking at some of the information that happened, a couple of little uh I guess a little getting into going between the Saints and the Chargers at the end of the 11 on 11 Saints defensive line and Chargers offensive line kind of got into a push and match before being separated. It was real that some Saints players pulling for their teammate, David on Yamada, who was in there getting busy. And then of course, you know, they got the guys separated and Rivers was observed yapping toward the Saints defensive players, but that should be understood about, <laughs> about a guy like, uh, uh, Rivers. Rivers is a talker, man. And the only way you can shut Rivers up is by putting him on the ground or whatever. I don't even think if you sack Philip Rivers and he, you know, that would even shut him up. He's just a guy with a big mouth and you just have to uh, show him what time it is. I'm in the Saints players and the Saints team is letting them get into his head. So I don't know, man. Very interesting early on the camp. But like I said, I like I definitely like watching the Saints in camp with the Chargers because the Chargers are possibly could be a Super Bowl team on from the AFC. They have, they're very deep. Now, of course, they're having some issues with the running back and their running back, Gordon, sign. But, Bear, don't get it twisted. This char- this Chargers team is a ferocious and very good team, and they could very well represent the AFC in the playoffs if, uh, well, I mean, you got Tom Terrific on the other side. But the Chargers are definitely a contender, man. Anybody who thinks they're not a, is, is smoking something. Uh, big time. But anyway, let's listen to Drew Brees on you know, his thoughts on camp. Coming up, here's Drew. You get a, a different look, obviously a different scheme, both offensively and defensively. So um, you know, you come out here and haven't really had a chance to prepare for it a bunch, and, and you just kind of throw yourself in the mix. And so you know, you you have to. I think it just it, it causes you to have to you know really think and, and kind of. Um, adjust to what you see, and, and um, I think it's just good work for everybody. Um, Drew, in some ways, is it as valuable as preseason games? 
Yeah, I'd say for, for me it's even more valuable because I'm, I'm getting a lot more reps, obviously, in these practices than I would be getting in a preseason game. And so, uh, and, and you, script, you script situations, right? You don't always encounter every situation in a preseason game. But out here you're able to script, you know, play action periods and pressure periods, third down, red zone, two minute, you know, everything that would happen throughout the course of a normal game or the regular season. And you get to go up against a really, really good, talented team, a team that's used to winning, a team that was a playoff team last year. So um, I think it's good. Just it ramps up the competition. Your review of how you guys did this today, just overall offensive. I mean, we'll we'll look at we'll look at the film. I don't think our tempo was as good as um, I would like for it to be. Um, but you know, we'll take a look at it and and make the corrections we need to make. Is the climate change extremely noticeable? <laughs> yeah, very much so. I'm not. I'm not soaking wet right now. Sir, do you see improvement in Taysom as a passer? And, and uh, does it surprise you that all the other teams around the league are sort of trying to fix that at the player? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You you got to have a rare. You got to have a rare talent and a rare person to be able to 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 be a jack of all trades like that. You know, I mean, um, Taysom Taysom's a quarterback who just happens to be an incredible athlete. And therefore, his strength and his skill set and his smarts and his toughness can be used in other areas as well, right? Um, but I don't, I don't think there's many Taysom Hills out there. <laughs> Do you anticipate other teams at least trying that? Well, let's. Okay. If I were to compare it to something, um, you would call it like the basketball player tight end experiment, right? Um, that's worked out for a few guys, right? As we've seen. Um, Antonio Gates, Jimmy Graham, I mean, Tony Gonzalez for that matter. Um, and a few others, but I mean, I think different different than than what what they were asked to do. You know, Taysom Taysom plays about eight different positions on the field. <laughs> you know, he plays tight end, he plays quarterback, he plays almost like a hybrid fullback, H back position. He plays quarterback, right? He can run, he can throw. He plays every special teams, right? Um, in a bunch of different areas, so. It just requires a very unique skill set, and I just don't think there's many guys that have that ability. I mean, truly, um, especially to play the quarterback position along with that. Drew Brees, Drew Brees giving a lot of credit to Taysom Hill family. He, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, Drew's giving a big shout out. Now, you got to admit, not too many people could do exactly what Taysom Hill's doing, man. He really is quite exceptional. But the, I think the idea was Sean Payton's using with Taysom Hill is to get him on the field. That's basically what it comes down to because they know exactly when Taysom Hill gets on the field, things he makes things happen, regardless of whatever the situation is. He's a playmaker. So let's get him in the special teams. Let's get him out there on the offense. Let's do anything and everything we can to get Taysom Hill on the field. And I just think that's the overall mindset of Coach Payton trying to incorporate him. Anyway, before we play Demario Davis's interview from camp, Let's go over the latest signing from New Orleans Saints. That's not a pass rusher. They got this guy. His name Drew Lewis. Saints signed him the other day. And originally, he was uh, Lewis was an undrafted rookie out of Colorado who was signed by the Texans. Of course, Houston waived him last month, and he spent some time with the Colts after that. Now, Lewis made 198 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, and five sacks in three seasons at Colorado after one season. At Kansas Community College, he started his college career at the University of Washington, and he's a son of former CX Seattle cornerback Will Lewis, and his brother Ryan Lewis plays cornerback for the Buffalo Bills currently. So you got some NFL lineage there. The Saints ultimately signed this guy who had, who, to, to be honest with you, 198 tackles uh, in three seasons is pretty productive. But what, but, but you know, this kind of has a camp feel to it. He had five sacks in three years. He's don't. It doesn't show me that he's a pass rusher. And this is a depth sign. And perhaps the Saints looking to kind of find some depth or add a camp body. I don't know. I just think Drew, this Drew Lewis, not to sell him short, but this could be a camp move. Cause Saints loaded with really good linebackers right now. And uh, Kate Nellis is another guy. Barron injury uh, to many of our top dogs like Alex Anzalone, who's obviously dealing with something. I don't know. This just just got camp 
smell to it all over it. And I don't know. Uh, I, that's just what I see. But anyway, let's get back to our interviews. Let's hear what Demario Davis had to say against day one joint practice against those L.A. Chargers. Here you go. Made on both sides of the ball uh, for both teams. Um, you know, you never really know until you get in and look at the tape. Uh, but it was, you know, it felt good to be out here flying around. Looked like the energy was great. Um, good competition on both sides. It was a great practice. The eyeball test tells you that it was fairly even, maybe. I mean, each side made some plays, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never really know until you, until you look at the tape. And, you know, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's not live. So, you know, some plays that you don't know how it would look in a bang-bang situation. So it's kind of toss-up. But I think it was some good work done all around. Can you talk about how your quarterback prepares you, playing against your quarterback, prepares you for other quarterbacks in the league? And how does that, does that pre- prepare you in a good way? Yeah, I mean, anytime you're going against the best in the game, uh, you know, you see everything. His checks at the line of scrimmage, you know, trying to get run past um, tendencies, uh, the throws he makes, um, the timing that the ball comes out. I mean, you're just not going to get a better look. You know, and not just him when you have one of the top receivers in the game, one of the top running backs, one of the top tight ends. Um, you're going against that, and when you have a matchup like that, um, you know, one of the best at their position and the, one of the best quarterbacks throwing the ball, you can't get a better look from a timing standpoint and a location standpoint. So you really have to be pristine in your game. So it, it really it really helps you fine-tune your skills. Have you noticed that, that the preparation has helped you against uh... – some lesser-known quarterbacks or mm-hmm. other quarterbacks in the league, I should say? I don't know how much it prepares you for, for other guys, but I just know um, for situational football, I mean, and a big part of it is due to, to Coach Payton and how much he stressed on situational football. You know, a lot of times in the end of games, two-minute situations, you just feel like we're more prepared than other teams. Do you feel different after this practice just physically as opposed to the ones that are, I mean, are you, do you feel fresher even at the end than you would have? A well, I, well, ago? I still got my pads on right now, and I usually still sweating at this point. And so it, the fact that there ain't no sweat on my arms is just different. <laughs> what were you guys saying to each other when they had their two interceptions and started doing team photos? Oh, man, you know, everybody want to copy us, man. So <laughs> at this point, you know, it is what it is. Everybody know who the originals were. All right, appreciate you guys. Demario Davis, everybody. Demario breaking it down, <laughs> letting them know. Uh, as Demario gives good information, man. I got to give it to him. Tells it like it is. Give, always gives a little bit of insight about what's going on. Of course, we heard toward the end of the interview, he's talking about the copycat league, which is the NFL, stealing our team photo moves. and Just shameless, man. Go get your own crap. But nothing worse, the worst copycatters in the world, you know, and I, even though I got, I have disdain for the Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys, one of the worst violators of this, or the Cincinnati Bengals, you'd be like, what cute, the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals copied our chant, the who that chant, with the who they chant. The who they, who they. That sounds absolutely ridiculous, foolish, garbage. And they're actually are proud of that. They got their own shirts. If you don't believe me, check it out. The Bengals have a chant called Who They Say They're Gonna Beat Them Bengals. Who They? Who They? Who They? That is one of the worst plagiarizations and stealing theft of our. I mean, I'm just not. Just beat the hell out of the Bengals anytime. And matter of fact, let's issue a huge dat slap to the whole Cincinnati Bengals. Especially whoever the whoever the clown was that came up with the who they chant. Oh, you know, I got a great idea. We're just going to steal the who that chant and put who they on it and say and then even steal their lines and say instead of saying who that who that who they say they're going to beat them saints. Who I mean, who that who that they say who they who they say they're going to beat them. I mean, everything's the same except for that stupid word. Day D.E.Y. D.E.Y. Absolutely horrible and just foolish. As you can tell, I'm very annoyed with that but anyway we can teach them and other disrespectful people i'm not just don't disrespect my team all the sports coma by getting our new shirt is called the dat slap shirt you can go to our merch store you know go to the account and uh, you'll find our merch store it's on the the links will be in the description section below of course you can chime in and get the who they the who that slap shirt for all those disrespectful clowns like the Bengals, the cowboys the falcons and other people who want to talk mess about the sex but anyway let's play 
Latavius Murray get his day, his his camp insight. Here we it's go. Just learning this offense, being able to do every single thing within this offense, um, and then as you know, time get going, uh, you know, going out there and, and, and proving I can go do those things on the field, and that's that's about it. Would you expect in this offense to be involved in a big way in the passing game? It seems like they were certainly working you a lot in yeah. the passing game. Right? Yeah, I think I think, you know, I had said it in an earlier interview a few weeks ago that. I think the opportunities that I'll have here more so than I have in the past anywhere else, I think they'll be there uh, because of the offense and mainly because of number nine out there. He's going he's gonna to make his reads and he's going to get the ball into a receiver's hands, you know, probably quicker than any quarterback that I've played with. Um, and, you know, that can be very beneficial, not taking a negative play, getting something, uh, you know, making something out of nothing. And they threw to you a few times in the preseason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, Latavius you know, this, uh, Murray family you know, the breaking down, down his thoughts uh, and opportunities he'll get. Coming up with the Saints, and I think you're right on the money with that, Latavius. But anyway, that's going to do it for the show. Thank you for listening to the Sports Combo with Big Q and the guys. The number one independent podcast in the land as far as Saints news and notes go. You can hit the subscribe button, hit the notification, the like button, and chime in every day for daily camp updates. Subscribe to the channel and get notified. Go to our merch store. Show some support for the platform. Peace. If you haven't heard the sports coma, this is what you're missing. Check out the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. Homebistro.com. Freshly prepared, home delivered, restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen. Ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery specialized affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand-picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from HomeBistro.com? Restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce, the charbroiled chicken romesco, or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with HomeBistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with HomeBistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guys intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. The Who That Daily dot com. That's right, the Who That Daily dot com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans, LSU Tigers, and even the top flight boxing news. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, the Who That Daily dot com is your site. The Who That Daily dot com for the sport Who That in all of us. Embrace Pet Insurance is more than just pet insurance. Embrace Pet Insurance promises to provide genuine support and certainty when your pet needs it the most. With personalized accident and illness policies, compassionate customer care, 24-7 access to veterinary professionals, flexible wellness plans, timely claims processing, and online customer portals, their values is what makes them embrace. So, when selecting a pet insurance company as a partner in your pet's care, you deserve a company that has your pet's best interest at heart. Get top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Up to 90% back on bills at any vet. Total protection pet insurance and wellness and dependable claims payments. Get the top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Go to EmbracePetInsurance.com That's EmbracePetInsurance.com Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. Follow the sports on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.